Welcome students. In this section, I will be talking to you about two fat soluble vitamins, vitamin E and vitamin K. Let us start with vitamin E. Vitamin E is also known as an anti-fertility vitamin and it is a potent antioxidant. More than known as it is an anti-fertility vitamin and it is also a potent antioxidant. What is its chemistry and what are the sources? They are all called as tocopherols. Tocopherols, where the word came from tocos, which means childbirth, feros to bear, all is alcohol. So it was certain alcohol that is needed for childbirth. That is how the word tocopherol came into a picture. Now it is contains a chromane ring with an isoprenoid side chain. Now there are eight different tocopherols are there but out of all the that the most important is alpha tocopherol it is also known as 578 trimethyl tocol let us remember it as alpha tocopherol now what are the dietary sources for vitamin e vitamin e is mainly present in vegetable oils like wheat germ oil sunflower oil safflower oil cottonseed oil corn oil rice brown oil anything and everything the vegetable oils contain vitamin e it is also present in meat milk butter eggs etc what is the rda how much should be taken now it is a deficiency disorder is not evident so exact rdas are not known it is said to be a vitamin in search of a disease there is no deficiency disorder known of vitamin of vitamin a the rda is directly related to the pufa intake more is the polyunsaturated fatty acid intake more is the requirement for vitamin a some give it as males 10 milligram of alpha tocopherol and females it is around 8 milligram of alpha tocopherol now let us look at the absorption it is a fat soluble vitamin so naturally it requires bile salts for its absorption so it is along with bile salts and bile acids it is absorbed it is present in chylomicrons ldl vldl everywhere vitamin e is transported with the help of the lipoproteins it is stored in the adipose tissue the normal plasma level is less than 1 milligrams per dl what is the role of biochemical role of vitamin e now this is the most powerful natural antioxidant that is what is told as vitamin a it protects the polyunsaturated fatty acids which are present in the plasma membrane from anti from peroxidation it protects pufa from peroxidation lipid peroxidation so it is the first line of defense against lipid peroxidation now, where are the PUFA present? They are present in various cellular and subcellular membrane phospholipids. So, in all these cases, it is vitamin E which being fat soluble, it will also be present along with the membrane and it acts as the first line of defense against lipid peroxidation. So, like the, uh, they are present, PUFA are present in the phospholipids of mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, plasma membranes, everywhere PUFA are present. And everywhere they are susceptible to lipid peroxidation. And we need vitamin E to combat this. These membranes also have an affinity for vitamin E, luckily for us. And what happens is, this whatever lipid peroxide will combine with TOCO and convert it into a radical, free radical. Now that one free radical also combines with another PUFA radical or peroxy radical to form a non-free radical product. So it is acting like a chain breaking antioxidant so that is the importance of vitamin e it can break chains at the same time a free radical also if it combines with another pure peroxy radical the toco radical can act as a chain breaking antioxidant and get converted to a non-free radical product now the free radical may also react with vitamin c and it is a, this is the way by which the uh, fat membrane and the cellular antioxidants communicate with each other. The antioxidant of uh, tocopherol is effective at high oxygen concentration. More the oxygen concentration, more is the action of vitamin E. So it is present in RBC membrane, oxygen carrier, membranes of the respiratory tree. So wherever there is the respiratory tree including the bronchus, 
the bronchioles everywhere uh, the membranes are there in each of these membranes vitamin e is dis distributed so uh, one important thing about vitamin e is it acts synergistically with selenium now selenium is a metal which is also acting as a antioxidant now selenium is present in glutathione peroxidase which is the second line of defense against and acts as a second line of defense against the uh, lipid peroxidation selenium decreases the requirement of vitamin e more is the selenium in your diet lesser vitamin e is required in the diet so and selenium is also required for normal pancreatic function which is required for digestion and absorption of vitamin e so selenium plays a dual role in vitamin e metabolism one help in its digestion and absorption second selenium will decrease the requirement of vitamin e because it is present in glutathione peroxidase so vitamin e prevents loss of selenium from the body and maintains it in the active form so it is not just one way communication that is taking place between selenium and vitamin e it is a two way thing that is happening selenium helps vitamin e vitamin e helps selenium so they both act together one require decreases the requirement of the other at the same time the other will see to that the, the first one selenium is in its active form and it maintains it within the active form and prevents the loss of selenium from the body what are the biochemical functions most of the biochemical functions of vitamin e are because of its antioxidant effect most of that okay but so it maintains integrity of cell membrane rbc's including rbc's so prevents hemolysis it maintains the germinal epithelium it increases the synthesis of heme it is hepatoprotective it delays the onset of cataract along with vitamin a and vitamin c again remember it is present in the retina it helps in the uh, preventing the free radical damage to retina so because of this it is a, all these are the main functions of the of vitamin a so it is also supposed to have a role in prevention of cardiovascular diseases so these are the functions of vitamin a mcq point of view always remember it is a fat soluble thing which can help in maintaining the antioxidant levels of different membranes including the mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum so let us go further to another vitamin vitamin k what did the name come from coagulation coagulation vitamin so uh, what is its function now before i go further vitamin e is also considered anti fertility but that is mainly in animal studies in human studies it has not been proved that it can lead to any fert infertility problems vitamin e deficiency because such studies have not proved that and uh, it is mainly in animal studies where it acts as a anti infertility uh, vitamin so let us go to vitamin k vitamin k coag is also the k comes from coagulation actually so what is the chemistry of that so again it is a fat soluble vitamin so it is a polyisoprenoid naphthoquinones big name so vitamin k1 is phylloquinone which is present in plants vitamin k2 is menaquinone produced by the intestinal bacteria and vitamin k3 is menadione which is the synthetic form so anybody is giving a injection of vitamin it will, of vitamin k it will be in the form of menadione if whatever uh, vitamin k2 is being synthesized it is by the intestinal bacteria in the form of menaquinone and k1 is present in phylloquinone so what are the sources of vitamin k cabbage cauliflower tomato spinach green leafy vegetables green leafy vegetables egg yolk meat liver cheese and it is also synthesized by intestinal bacteria what is its rda since it is synthesized by the bacteria since it is synthesized by the gut it its requirement is slightly lower and if it is considered to be around 70 to 140 micrograms per day 70 to 140 micrograms per day so what is its absorption transport storage Uh, along with chylomicrons bile and requires bile salts it is a fat soluble vitamin so requires bile salt and it is stored in the 
liver. Vitamin E is stored in the adipose tissue. Vitamin K is stored in the liver. What are the functions of vitamin K? It is supposed to help in coagulation. How does it help in coagulation? So there are what are called as vitamin K dependent blood clotting factors. Vitamin K dependent. Which are they? They include 2, 7, 9, 10. It is important that you always remember this numbers 2, 7, 9, 10. 2, 7, 9, 10. The blood clotting factors, these are the four of them which are vitamin K dependent. What is vitamin K? Out of that, you know that clotting factor 2 is uh, prothrombin. Actually, it should be written in Roman numerals, but I have written in Arabic numerals so that it is easy to remember. 2, 7, 9, 10. So, you actually supposed to write it in uh, Roman numerals. 2, 7, 9, 10. Now, how does it help in these vitamins? How does it uh, how does it help in coagulation? How does vitamin K act? So, vitamin K acts as a coenzyme. So, this is one of the fat soluble vitamins which is acting as a coenzyme, and it brings about post translational modification. What are these uh, What are these clotting factors? They are all proteins. So when this protein is undergoes, after it has been synthesized, it undergoes modification. You call it post-translational modification. So vitamin K brings about post-translation. What does it do? It causes what is called as carboxylation of the glutamic acid residues present in these proteins. So you have this protein you have this protein which is having a glutamic acid residue. So if you cause, what does vitamin K do? It takes that glutamic acid residue and it carboxylates it. It causes carboxylation of the glutamic acid residues. So how does it help? This is necessary carboxylation of the glutamic acid residue help in and especially we call it as gamma carboxylation not uh, uh, it is at the gamma position that the carboxylation is occurring of the glutamic acid residue how does it help this is a blood clotting factor this carboxylation will see to that it can react with calcium coo minus and ca plus 2 so forming of the blood clotting becomes easier clot formation increases so the enzyme what is this enzyme it is a carboxylase carboxylase and vitamin k is the coenzyme it results in the formation of gamma carboxy glutamate also abbreviated as gla gla gamma carboxy glutamate the dicumarol and warfarin inhibit this action of vitamin k now the GLA residues are in clotting factors are negatively charged and they combine with positive calcium ions and this is essential in clotting. So let us look at the liver vitamin K cycle. Proteins as I said are converted by carboxylation using oxygen and 2H2O is released. Carboxylase is the enzyme and vitamin K the reduced form or the vitamin K hydroquinone is converted to reduced vitamin K or epoxide form. Reduced vitamin K epoxide form is acted upon by the enzyme epoxide reductase and it also requires lipoic acid for this. It is converted into vitamin K quinone and vitamin K quinone is reconverted back to the hydroquinone form by NADPH again a reductase. So this is the vitamin K cycle that is taking place in the liver. Remember this is also the place where the clotting factors are synthesized. This enzyme epoxide reductase is inhibited by dicumarol and warfarin. So now let us look further what are the functions of vitamin K. It causes not only uh, the carboxylation of clotting factors but also carboxylation of an important protein called as osteocalcin. Osteocalcin. What, where is this protein present? Osteo means bones. So something to do with calcium and bones. Just as calcium was required, this carboxylation was required for calcium to come and bind and cause 
cause clotting similarly carboxylation has to occur in vitamin in the bones also so this protein is present in the bone and binds to calcium vitamin k is also structurally related to ubiquinones and has a role in etc and oxidative phosphorylation and dicumarol remember is a uncoupler because of this vitamin k is structurally related to ubiquinones what will happen if vitamin k is deficiency deficiency is usually uncommon the main reason is because it is synthesized by the gut bacteria what will be the causes cause may be lack of bile salts where there is less absorption and it is lost in the feces like in diarrhea or antibiotic treatment where there is killing of the intestinal flora and all this will lead to lack of active prothrombin so blood clotting time is increased and plus a newborn have a sterile gut and mother's milk is deficient in vitamin k so vitamin k injection for newborns is recommended so with this we come to the end of two fat soluble vitamins vitamin e and vitamin k thank you